Matthew Hamilton has done a great job of attracting Kentucky talent up and down the roster. And both of these head coaches, as you mentioned, have a tremendous pedigree. Well, it should be fun, Bob. Our final quarterfinal. And one more ticket to punch into the OVC's version of the Final Four. The semifinals coming up tomorrow. Winner of this one gets Morehead State. And what a start for Austin P. It's a lob up top. And they get the first points of the night from Mike Peak. Mike Peak has been surging in the last four to six weeks. He's the transfer from Georgia. And he will be a big part of tonight's success for Austin P. if they are to enjoy that. And this guy here, too. And Reginald G with the miss. G in and out with the injury to his leg. Transfer from Alabama State. And when he's on, and he's fought COVID this year as well, when he's on, there's none better in the conference at the three. We've got a couple of all-conference players with Trey King and Wendell Green in that starting lineup for Eastern Kentucky. They're and uh, for Austin P, they've got the player of the year, Terry Taylor, that just took it to the rim. And those starting lineups are brought to you by Justin's. Justin's, the official recognition company of the OVC. So Austin P getting out and pressuring here early up 4 nothing out of the jump. Trey King, one of those all-league selections and the two-time all-OVC pick gets the scoring started for EKU. Here comes the pressure. A.W. Hamilton, the head coach for Eastern Kentucky, following his mentors with this defense. And it leads to a turnover and an open shot for Cooper Robb. But it's back out to Austin P. If Eastern Kentucky gets, gets something out of Robb tonight, that's bonus. That's extra. He is primarily a defender. You're not going to see him score a lot. He's had some games with a, a ridiculous amount of steals and even when you don't get the ball in bounds, that pressure can swarm you. Yeah, that's the case here. A couple of other players I want to mention and high, kind of highlight for Eastern Kentucky through this first half in particular. And pretty good start here for Austin P. And they're going to see a lot of situations where they're going to give that ball as a trailer to Taylor, let him shoot from the outside as well. If you haven't seen Austin P, that's one of his attributes. Well, an outside shot from Terry Taylor. He gets most of his work done inside and get a foul, I think. Yep, they will get a foul on Reginald G. It's Carlos Paez, and he's pound for pound the best defensive player in this conference. And he gives up a lot, and he'll be tasked to some degree tonight with Mr. Green. There's an open three for Green, and the freshman out of Detroit, Michigan, with the three to put Eastern Kentucky up one. You were shouting out Detroit. You said Detroit basketball while we were talking about Green before the game. Well, he's uh, – he has lived up to that reputation. Paez, got to have some shots from him tonight if you're the Govs. And there's the pressure, the uh, pace for Eastern Kentucky, but an overshot of Cooper Robb from Kurt Lewis. And the fact that they throw a couple out of bounds doesn't bother Eastern Kentucky. They want to continue that pressure and create opportunities. And they'll do it all night long. Uh, A.W. Hamilton, head coach for Eastern Kentucky, said, we're number three in tempo. I'm jealous of the two teams in front of us. I want to be number one. And there you see more of it with another early turnover. And right into a shot. And the miss for Michael Moreno. And it's cleared away by Austin P. If you haven't had the chance to see Moreno after we watched That's Taylor blow by, Michael Moreno... For Eastern Kentucky, I, I like to call him the Swiss Army Knife. He is one of the better utility players in this league, and he does so much for that team. Well, Green's got it going on early. Hit a three, now he goes inside. And Austin P can run two, and that counts. Jordan Adams 
with a bucket plus one. And this is big for Austin P. and why Adams has had a horrible season fighting injuries. And to get Adams started early is part of their game plan. And Jordan able to make it happen right here. And uh, if you're on the Austin P. side of the ledger, you're very excited in seeing Adams get involved early. Bob Hughes, the 2020 OVC Freshman of the Year. He's battled injuries like you mentioned. It's a, a pelvic stress fracture. It's, it's his right hip that has been injuring or has uh, been injured all season long. And a good start for Adams tonight. And Rob goes belly flopping out of the baseline and it's out of bounds off EKU. And just prior to that sequence, G, fine defensive work with a partial block. Look at Paez and Rob bumping up. That's part of the defensive strategy for Eastern Kentucky as well. They will be very physical. And we've got a lot of bodies they can throw at you with how fast they play, too. Player of the year, Terry Taylor going inside. Relentless, getting offensive boards, and he got the bucket plus one. Basket by Terry Taylor is good. So Terry Taylor's got that look tonight to begin this game. He's going to the line after this. Running the ball down the floor, helping out against that pressure, and then being dominant inside. That's Terry Taylor. You can tell this is really crispy, juicy, and tender because we wouldn't take the time. When we say crispy, juicy, tender, this is the juicy and when we say crispy juicy tender this is the juicy and it's bow time no, 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 no. out of gas on game day when we say crispy juicy tender this is the juicy and you can tell this is really crispy juicy and tender because we wouldn't take the time you can tell this is really crispy, juicy, and tender because we wouldn't take the time. Just when you thought it couldn't get any better than crispy, juicy, and tender, we went and... Just when you thought it couldn't get any better than crispy, juicy, and tender, we went and... When we say crispy, juicy, tender, this is the juicy and... Drive. It's what propels the champions, the comeback kids, it's bow time. No, 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 no. Out of gas on game day? When we say crispy, juicy, tender, this is the juicy and... Folks from Richmond, Kentucky in the house tonight. They're the three seed, one of three teams in this conference that won 20 games. Each of the top three seeds got to the 20 win ledger this year. And people in Clarksville thought that they might be playing for a one or a two seed. It's been uh, a season that they haven't expected to go the way that it has. We were talking about Jordan Adams' injury. That's that's played a big part in it. It, it has, and, and Matt Figger, one of the many coaches in this league that's had to sit out with COVID himself and tested positive, and it's just not been the season that they hoped for, but hope springs eternal. We're playing on a late Thursday night in the OVC tournament against the team that you split with where you won on each other's home floor. So let's roll the ball out and play. Well, that, was the, that was the interesting part about it, right, is road team won both, and it, it was it was actually close in Clarksville. EKU won by five, and then Austin P won by 15 on the road in Richmond. But it was Eastern Kentucky with the 15 and five record in the league that got them the three seed behind Belmont and Moorhead State. Trey King battling inside, and that foul comes on the ground. Foul well, goes on Alec Woodard. And immediately a bad sign for Austin P because Woodard is in the game for his defense. And he's one of those rare players that actually his defense impacts his offense, but you have him in the game for defense. Kind of explain that as we go along, but Woodard needs to be able to handle Green tonight 
in a lot of different situations. And then when he has an opportunity to shoot, he needs to take it. Elton Walker with the baseline pop. And this is about as good of a start as you could ask. For Walker's Austin P. A. Don't run. Yeah, Walker's a player that can jump out of the gym, and he's been a pleasant surprise for Austin P. Oh, in tight, Wendell Green. He got it back after the near turnover. And there's Alec Woodard. You're just lauding his defense. Strong rebound for Woodard. Well, Taylor can shoot it out there, but bad miss there for Terry Taylor. I think you can expect more from the outside from Taylor. Well, so can King. So you got a couple of, of big guys stepping out, trying to knock down threes. So it goes these days. Both teams also will go rather deep in the bench, and that's a luxury both have not had overall this season. Well, that's probably more like it if, if you're Matt Figger and what you expect for the shot selection for Terry Taylor. Inside of 10, pretty much automatic for 2-1. 12-2 run here, Bob. It's a 10-0 run for Austin P as well. And Eastern Kentucky trying to get their first bucket in two minutes. Down to eight to shoot here. King making the turn on Taylor. Help came around, and that's a block plus a bucket. And Trey King going to the line for one more. Basket by Trey King is good. Fouls off to his number zero. Walker coming from the help side away from it. Not a lot of contact there. <laughs> Not going to quite call it a flop by Walker, but uh, King did a good job of body control. Definitely an exaggeration. If, At a minimum. Uh, if, if not the full flop. Uh, Trey King, three-point play. He's a, a guy that dominates the low post. And uh, he, he played at Hargrave Military Academy for A.W. Hamilton. That's a, a prep school. And those two have reunited in Richmond, Kentucky. Floater wouldn't stay down for Terry Taylor. And EKU just snapped the 10-0 Austin P run with the three-point play from King. Right back into their big man. And a pass that's intercepted by Jordan Adams. Well, Adams was just waiting for that deep pass and just snatched it. See if Adams has his bounce tonight. Not there. Adams had the three-point play to start, but one for two for Adams. Rashard Crookshank is into the game. He'll handle the ball a lot for EKU. Well, that was a long skip, nearly picked off by Woodard. Crookshank got it up. And Austin P. we've seen them look to push a lot. I thought Woodard would in that case, but he checks it up. We expect this to be high flying, high scoring. Games in the 80s and 90s in the regular season. There's Woodard. Now let's watch how this affects Woodard's defense. That's been the knock on him this season. Moreno got inside. Nope. Terry Taylor's there. Taylor averages 22 and 11. One of the few players in the country leading the conference in both. And he creates for an Elton Walker reverse layup. A nice play for the freshman. And again, Walker doesn't look physically imposing, but he is a leaper. And there's King, center of the lane. So Trey King, the early leader with seven points for Eastern Kentucky. Austin P is trying to be the first lower seed to get into the semifinals. It's been one, two, and four that have punched their ticket so far. Belmont and Jacksonville State will meet tomorrow. Winner of this game gets Moorhead State. And lob couldn't be handled by Taylor. Here comes... Eastern Kentucky into the forecourt in an off-balance layup for Green. Man, see, this freshman is special. Yeah. See, here's a classic example of why Jordan Adams is in the basketball game. It's for the offense. It's not for the defense then. He just cannot get up and down the floor with a lot of rhythm. The lineup for Austin P is something that's uh, rather unique to them as well because they're having Adams run the point. Pai is an early out. 
They already looked at that matchup and felt like he was not going to be able to handle Green in certain situations. Three to shoot here. Step back for Jordan Adams. And front rim. There's Green. One man fast break. Weaving inside out. Gets to the rim and it won't stick. But he's going to the line for free throws. This guy is fast. Maybe too short for some of the Power 5 schools, but Eastern Kentucky said not too small for us. Wendell Green at the line next. Just when you thought it couldn't get any better than crispy, juicy, and tender, we went and... Drive. It's what propels the champions, the comeback kids. When we say crispy, juicy, tender, this is the juicy and... Just when you thought it couldn't get any better than crispy, juicy, and tender, we went and... Drive. It's what propels the champions, the comeback kids. You can tell this is really crispy, juicy, and tender because we wouldn't take the... You can tell this is really crispy, juicy, and tender because we wouldn't take the... Drive. It's what propels the champions, the comeback kids. You can tell this is really crispy, juicy, and tender because we wouldn't take the... Just when you thought it couldn't get any better than crispy, juicy, and tender, we went and... Just when you thought it couldn't get any better than crispy, juicy, and tender, we went and... Just when you thought it couldn't get any better than crispy, juicy, and tender, we went and... You can tell this is really crispy, juicy, and tender because we wouldn't take the... When we say crispy, juicy, tender, this is the juicy and... Two-time player of the year, Terry Taylor, off to a good start, Bob. Well, look at this spin move in the lane. And keep in mind, he also brought the ball up the floor. You can see it right there with the left hand. And he's equal opportunity. This time he'll come back in with the putback. Obviously, as talented as he is, gets himself to the free throw line a lot. Those are the ingredients you always look for for an NBA player. And both he and Jordan Adams, you know, kind of tested the waters last summer. And, you know, Austin P fans are certainly glad the two, the two came back. But, but Adams, with that injury, has just been nagging. You know, it leaves a lot of people wondering what could have been. Yeah, it didn't really have a chance to work out for teams because of COVID. So, Austin P, the, the winner of that. But it, with a guy like that, I mean, those, those moves we just showed uh, on tape there, special. It, it makes you wonder, how did Austin P finish 10 and 10? Well... It's a, it's a supporting cast and a number of a number of different factors and they lost in a lot of weird ways too. Uh, they lost a couple of overtime games. They lost a, a couple of buzzer beaters. The overtime games they were up eight, nine late. Yep. Uh, just a variety of different ways. If you could draw up and imagine ways to lose a game, I think Austin B probably accomplished that this season. Speaks to how important Jordan Adams is too. Get a feeling Austin Peay could have done what Belmont did this year, going 18 and two. Maybe if Adams is healthy the whole year. I, I think that's fair. And remember, Belmont and Austin Peay played the two in an ESPNU game early in the season, and Adams did not play in that game. And they had to bring Adams to the lineup. Did Austin Peay in mid-January in that infamous game where Terry Taylor won it with a three-pointer bank shot hmm. from an extreme corner? Yeah. Well, Paez is back in there to run the point. And that pass by Woodard intercepted. Got to be firm with your passes against this EKU defense, and they'll take it right at you in a flash. It's Blanton plus one. Eight in a row for Eastern Kentucky to draw even. And, and Paez, who's been taking charges all season long, just kind of waylays this one. Watch one in the lane, and he's not going to get in the way of the big guy coming through. Devontae Blanton, the most efficient player. Let's see Woodard taking a seat. Most efficient player for EKU is Devontae Blanton, who makes it a three-point play. 
he's a he's a wing player. It's not like he's he's not taking outside shots sometimes, but last three weeks, you got a hand check on uh, Eastern Kentucky, but Blanton shooting 75% the last three weeks. That is incredible. He's making three out of every four. And those are some numbers we saw earlier today in a game. Uh, I believe it in a women's game, we saw some upper 60s earlier today. It's it's almost like a mathematical improbability, right, when you, when you think about that. And you can bet one thing, Matt Figure is wondering how long until I can find the right lineup to match up well against Eastern Kentucky. And you say, well, you've had two games to get ready for that, but the two games are so diversely different. Well, that'll work. Reginald G. After you uh, you got a little look into the soul of Matt Figger on the sidelines for Austin P. Good shot there from our director, Peter Loomis. And G's another one that's fought the injuries. You can see the uh, brace on the leg. and That's a forced turnover. You'll see a lot of those for Eastern Kentucky. They've got the perfect ingredient. But first, G with the little floater. Kind of love that with the left hand. There are a lot of left-handers on this Austin P team, to include Taylor. But Eastern Kentucky has the right formula to save that mistake they just made there. They force a lot of turnovers, and they don't turn it over a lot themselves. Well, Paez looked comfortable playing against that fast tempo there. Yeah, that's a move uh, that he's been able to kind of patent this year. Matt Figger said it pretty plainly today. Paez makes shots, we win. So he hits the shot. Now the blocking foul on Joseph down the other way. That was on Austin Peace number two. Terrion Joseph, second, team six. See if Terrion gets there late. Yes, he does. Claiming he caught a shoulder, but not the case. So that's the second foul here in the first half on Joseph, who's been in and out of the starting lineup his freshman year. Got Jordan Adams back in there guarding Crookshank. And EKU already into the bonus. That miss by Lewis. And here comes G looking to push. Oh, scoop. And it's good for Reginald G. That's a power move coast to coast that we saw in a previous game tonight. This is bonus if you get big points out of G as well if you're Austin P. Kings in on G. Saw Paez start to dig a little bit. And it's a blocking foul one more time with Kurt Lewis forcing that it in on G. Number 12, D, that is second, seven. Watch G weaving through the traffic and up and under. And now the other second foul. That's a tough call against 12. As Taylor was out for a stretch, now he's back in. And again, Michael Moreno is one of the better utility players. Plus 10 points a game that you'll find in the league for Eastern Kentucky. So another free throw coming for Trey King. Second team all-league pick last year, Trey King. He was one of two on the first team this year, joining the freshman, Wendell Green. Pressure coming. Austin P survives it for now, and they'll get a foul. So Kurt Lewis bails out Mike Peak, who is having some trouble there. Yeah, bails out the exact terminology I was going to use in that case. And he never had possession of the basketball. You'll see Peek right here. So there's the reach-in foul. And that's to Austin P's benefit. What do you got on lip reading? He, he said two. <laughs> that was that was all I can do for it. I, I'm guessing something about staying strong with the ball. Any guesses? You know, I, I admittedly kind of looked away then. <laughs> These two coaches have great expressions and, and – uh, you get your money's worth when you get A.W. Hamilton and Matt Figger on the floor together. Yeah, very, very good energy on, on both sidelines. Yeah, I thought your points about, you know, their coaching trees was well taken. And 
And you're around Matt Finger a lot. He acts a lot like you think uh, his mentor Frank Martin acts. <laughs> <laughs> the turnaround shot goes in and out, but Moreno scoops up the miss from Blanton. You said it, he does a little bit of everything. Michael Moreno is a great three-point shooter. And he's a, a second-year starter, the sophomore out of Georgetown, Kentucky. And I'll add selective three-point shooter. He's not going to go out there and, and gun a lot. He just is really effective. Here's Adams, got a step, couldn't finish the layup, and Rob is there to bring it down. He shot a little too late because his angle to the basket was off. Oh, man, good action underneath, but a foul called on Mike Peak. King thought he had... Skated inside, and he's going to have foul shots to try to put EKU back up after this. We not Your only have top salesman is working from home while working to close a deal. People. When his Uncle Larry decided to stop by two weeks ago, this looks like a job for smile power. Good thing your employees have dental insurance backed nationally by over 65 years of motor defending experience. So their healthy deal closers are always ready to close. Unleash your smile power with Delta Dental of Tennessee. Talk to your employer or visit CoverYourMouth.com today to learn more. Visit Evansville, Indiana, where E is for everyone. Ideal for a weekend getaway, family reunion, group tour, concert or sporting event, small business meeting, or a large convention. Evansville has a fun, friendly environment with all the amenities of a big city. Exciting events, festivals, and attractions all year long. A thriving downtown with new hotels, nightlife, fabulous restaurants, and entertainment. We're conveniently located in the heart of the Midwest with all the charm you could ever hope for. Yes, Hoosier Hospitality is alive and well. Come visit Evansville and you will see E is for everyone. I'm Chad Miles, host of Kentucky Field, the longest running outdoor show in the nation. I've had the privilege of watching Kentucky's elk herd grow to the largest east of the Mississippi, attaining Boone and Crockett status, and I've shared in some amazing elk hunts along the way. This year, nearly 600 tags are available to the public, and you can take your pick of tags to put in for and possibly go on the hunt of a lifetime. Simply apply by April 30th for your chance to hunt elk right here in Kentucky. Well, Eastern Kentucky's going back to the line with a chance to uh, take the lead here, but Austin P hanging tough. They played well in this first half, and, Bob, they haven't hit a three yet. Yeah, that's been kind of their hallmark, especially to get them going. Adams, in this case in particular, is kind of a guy that they would like to see come out and hit a three right out of the gate. And we also haven't seen that kind of secondary or trailer situation where Taylor just comes down to the floor and they basically just give him a handoff and let him shoot a three. So we haven't seen that yet as well. When you think about the importance of the three-point shot in the regular season game that Austin P won against Eastern Kentucky, that was a season best that day in, in 12 threes going down for Austin P in a 15-point win. Yeah. And to get that win on the road, too. Yeah, the favor was returned earlier in the season because Eastern Kentucky shot very well in Clarksville. And that was a, a five-point winner on the road earlier in the season for Eastern Kentucky. Yeah, that was kind of the coming-out party for Wendell Green. Terry Taylor saw a triple team, and it's out of bounds. Well, you're going to see that all night. Usually two, sometimes three at Terry Taylor. You said it, Wendell Green had the, the coming out party. 30 points in the first matchup with Austin P. He had 25 in the second matchup. Those are his two best games. And a couple early baskets in this one. He's got nine. Back to it here. And wow, that would have been something if that went down. And Austin P. back on the charge. Sometimes that's a. A missed shot on the part of Eastern Kentucky is helpful to the opponent because 
And the classic case of not allowing Eastern Kentucky to set up defensively against that 40 minutes of pressure. Well, Taylor was over the top of everybody and had it rammed out of there by Eastern Kentucky. Drew a crowd. Moreno for three. And Terry Taylor snuggles the rebound. He's already got double-double numbers in this game. He's got nine points and eight rebounds. And another Austin P turnover. That's a lazy pass by Piaz into the low post. And a, a bunch of whirling going on down there under the basket. And that'll be a block on DJ PV. You see Rob here. And a bit out of control. It went off the right hip of PV. So second pop foul now on DJ PV. So you've got three guys with two fouls for Austin P. You've got Adams or um, PV with two. You got Joseph with two, and you got G with two. Foul situation on the other side, pretty clean. It's just Kurt Lewis that's in foul trouble right now for EKU. 0 oh for 2 for Rob. And a guy that shoots it at 75%. Comes up empty for A.W. Hamilton. Just seeing him healthy and on the sidelines. A.W. Hamilton is a big plus for anyone in the college basketball world after a diagnosis over the summer and it's just great to see him. Seen him a couple times this season already. He's been in great spirits and in good health. And like we said before, pardon me. And I said, like we said before, energetic as always. Yeah, he's. <laughs> yeah, I mentioned it during the earlier game, but he is really uh, just a super high energy guy, and you just can't help but be around him. But to watch he and Matt Figure watch the game before us go into overtime and their frustration and having to go back up the hall again for another. <laughs> Five clock minutes really, you can tell, really kind of took a little air out of him. Hey, we didn't mind. Uh, Terry Taylor missed it, but the pit ba put back was uh, punched back up and in by Mike Peak. And then Rob, Rob lost, a shoe. lost a shoe. That is the kind of board work that Austin Peak was lacking earlier in the season. And there are some situations in time where Peak was not in the lineup. Taylor's been there, been there stalwart for throughout the season, but Peak has seen some time out. And seeing those two together is a great combination. Green determines and jump ball. And this is what I was talking about earlier. Woodard, this is a good sign if you're Austin B because Woodard making a defensive play. That's the reason he's in the game. And sometimes he allows his offense to dictate how well he plays defense when defense should be his mantra. Yeah, Green a, a little shaken up after the contact. It's been an efficient night so far for Green. Just five shots to get his nine points. Rob's got the shoe back on. And he gets a shot up. And he drills it. Well, I take back what I said earlier about Rob being on the defensive side. <laughs> I have not seen that out of him this season. That's bonus for Eastern Kentucky. Hey, he's coming off a game where he is 0 of 7 from the floor, but big time added scoring when Cooper Robb's hitting from three. See the hesitancy by Woodard? Should I, should I not take that shot? Six to shoot. Paez had a tap free from Green. And Here come the Colonels. No numbers. Took it inside anyway, and Blanton scored it. And without Taylor on the floor, there's not a lot of scoring on the floor for Austin P. And Eastern Kentucky knows it, and they're just amping the defense up. Yeah, so where will that scoring come from now? A lob goes errant. Broken play here. Woodard inside, and Woodard stays with it. The initial entry pass was actually intended to be the lob for Peak, and it actually hit off the rim. Here's Rob again. Take I really it one more time. I, I say, come on, corrected. Bob. I stand corrected. 
I'm glad you helped me out with the 07 performance last time out from Rob <laughs> to kind of smooth it over for me. Uh, Rob, the enemy of Bob. <laughs> <laughs> back to back threes. That's Rob as the last name. And Scott County High School's having a watch party tonight, I'm sure. And a three back the other way for Mike Peak. All right, now we're heating up in the final four minutes of the first half. Now, Taylor's at the scorer's table. He and King are going to return together. Well, this game was heating up, and then Moreno misses from three. Not to worry. You've got a lot of scoring at the scorer's table ready to check in. Hey, dude, Terry Taylor's getting ready to return. Mike Peaks in the post for him right now. And he's saying, hold off on that sub. I got you, coach. And Austin P back up one. Rob looking for space. Moreno on Paez, short, offensive rebound, Blanton, and he's there to score it. Devontae Blanton. That's a big time rebound and follow by Blanton. You know, quarterfinal number four, living up to quarterfinal number three earlier tonight. Woodard created space and muscles it back in. Now Woodard actually got pushed out of the lane, got the rebound, and smartly just went right back up over the top of the rim. So, Bob, we've had 10 lead changes already. Quarterfinal earlier tonight between Murray State and Jacksonville State went to overtime. JSU advanced to the semis to play Belmont. Winner here gets Moorhead State in the semifinals in the late game tomorrow night. Paez late in the clock, deferred the screen. Hangs, nope, peaked the rebound. And we got a jump ball. It's your guy, Cooper Robb, knocking down trays for Eastern Kentucky. Back to back, pretty much the same spot on the floor. I stand corrected, number five. When we say crispy, juicy, tender, this is the juicy and you can tell this is really crispy, juicy, and tender because we wouldn't take the time. When we say crispy, juicy, tender, this is the juicy and when we say crispy, juicy, tender, this is the juicy and when we say crispy, juicy, tender, this is the juicy and when we say crispy, juicy, tender, this is the juicy and when we say crispy, juicy, tender, this is the juicy and when we say crispy, juicy, tender, this is the juicy and just when you thought it couldn't get any better than crispy, juicy, and tender, we went and just when you thought it couldn't get any better than crispy, juicy, and tender, we went and just when you thought it couldn't get any better than crispy, juicy, and tender, we went and just when you thought it couldn't get any better than crispy, juicy, and tender, we went and when we say crispy, juicy, tender, this is the juicy and just when you thought it couldn't get any better than crispy, juicy, and tender, we went and Our tournament series history is presented by the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife. Partner with us to protect Kentucky's wildlife heritage. It's uh, been 10 lead changes in this first half. There have been some lead changes in the series history in the tournament. All knotted up at five all time. Very even matchup. Very even matchup inside the season. And it's... Uh like you often see at this point in time of the season, we get the tournament. Guard play is determined how these two games so far have gone in the regular season and probably the case, especially with that guy right there. 
It might determine how it goes in the final tonight. Well, remember, Eastern Kentucky came in hot. They had won three in a row to close the regular season. Last time they won the title, it was a similar run. They won the final four in the regular season, won seven in a row to get the title in 2014. Austin P. last won it in the 2015-2016 season as an eight seed. Woodard got just the bottom of the net on that three. Remember, it's just a week ago that Eastern Kentucky blew out Belmont in McBrayer Arena. Drive and kick. Open look there goes down for Blanton. I'm sorry, that was uh, that was Sheck Fay just into the game. So our first look at Sheck Fay out of Senegal. So Eastern Kentucky final minute. Back in front by two. And one of the keys tonight was hitting threes for Austin P. They've only hit one, but here they are. Right in it with the number three seed. Woodard short stayed with it. And he got the rebound for two. Yeah, that's twice Woodard has followed his own shot at that spot on the floor and been able to convert. Well, Woodard started for a long time with Reginald G injured. That was during the stretch they played the two games against EKU. Kirkshank is off. Mike Peek there to nestle it down. And now Austin p has got a chance to take a lead into the locker room. And they'll talk it over first. So we Use told it you, or lose it, yeah. Yeah. We, we told you Austin P looking for that first title since 2016. They won as the eighth seed. Chris Horton had that great run on the way to the MVP in that tournament. And uh, that was that was the last of their four OVC tournament titles under the great Dave Luce. And who's uh, front row watching tonight's game directly across from the off the B bench. It's good to see him last night here at the arena. There he is alongside Mike O'Malley. And it, was, uh, it was good to catch up with him a little bit. And the, I uh, was the surprised, yeah. yeah. You and I were walking in at midnight. Coach, he's just getting cranked up. He was waiting for his <laughs> uh, entourage, and they were slowly trickling in from the Ford Center, and that's, who knows? That's the advantage of uh, the masks for celebrities <laughs> is uh, you're a little more inconspicuous when you come to these events. Yeah, Not normally, though. Yeah, admittedly, I had to do a double take. Great to see Dave Luce in the house. All right, so with their legendary former head coach looking on, let's see if Austin P can take a lead into the locker room. It's Woodard with eight on the clock. They went early. Now Eastern Kentucky off the Woodard miss has some time to go. We've got to get it into the front court. And a whistle. And it looked like Coach Hamilton was looking to take a timeout. And, yeah, he will get it. There's, I think there's some confusion on where they're going to spot the ball and where the timeout came from. Yeah, let's go back the to the, this. Yeah, excuse me, Connor. Let's go back to the sequence just now. How in the world does Terry Taylor not touch the ball as time is about to expire in the half-court offense? That's something. Well, Eastern Kentucky, outside of the first couple minutes, he had six quick points. They've done a great job on Terry Taylor. Well, they, they, they have, and... There's still a double-double in his future tonight, without a doubt. And <laughs> these are the games where you need your stars to shine. And, and he has been a shining star all career long for Austin P. But in this kind of dismal season for them, by their standards, he has been a beacon. All right, so 1.7 to get a shot up. Now EKU can take a lead into the locker room. Blanton looking. It's in the hands of Green at half court, at the buzzer. And it's too strong. And we're evened up at 37. Quarterfinal number one tonight delivered. We got overtime. Quarterfinal number two is delivering as well. We're midway home. 20 minutes for a semifinal berth to get a crack at the two seed, Moorhead State. It's EKU in Austin P. Knotted at 37. Hydration, the official sports drink of the OVC. So one half to go in our quarterfinals. Three teams have already gone home. Three teams have already advanced on to the semifinals. Two left 
to determine whose season is over and who's on to tomorrow night's late game against Moorhead State. This should be a lot of fun, the final 20 minutes. Oh, I was the coward earlier and made a <laughs> prediction off camera. All right, bring that it on. It didn't come true, so I'm gonna no, I'm gonna put it on you. I'm gonna say who's gonna who's gonna win this one to be the four? Will it be chalk in this bracket? Well, I'm gonna let it play out. Kurt Lewis with an offensive foul. Well, and that is not the guy that could afford to get a quick foul. Kurt Lewis missed time in the first half with two fouls. That's number three. Yeah, been kind of quiet here, and right off the bat, Lewis peak just outside the arc there. Picking it up and yeah. so Carlos Paez in to run the point to start the second half. And Jordan Adams, we, we told you the importance of him throughout the season, and he turns it over. Here comes Rob, and Adams gets it back. The out of bounds to Eastern Kentucky. It's a lazy pass on the other end. And you'll just pick it up right here with Rob, but just stripped him before he could go up. And boy, Jordan Adams really closed fast defensively then after committing the turnover. Well, for a guy with a sore hip, that was, like you said, pretty good speed. It was. Guy that's dealing with a, a right hip injury as Trey King knocks down the outside shot. It's impressive what he does from outside at six foot nine. Well, you get the same thing from Terry Taylor, but Austin P has got to be concerned with getting Taylor into the game and this is a way to do it bring him up high well, trying to get Jordan Adams involved too and got a look well, Adams has had a less than spectacular start to the second half oh here they come Kurt Lewis stays in with the three fouls and it's a five-point EKU lead that's ordinarily the spot where Taylor would come down the floor where Pete gave it up Great hands for EKU, and they've got another turnover leading the break with Green. Stop and start to the rim. Oh, it falls off. Terry Taylor there to clean it up. Ostapi would be best suited to just get in their half court right here. A 5-0 run early for Eastern Kentucky. Downhill, Terry Taylor, his first bucket of the second half. So that's more like it. He, he wasn't super involved the final 10 minutes of the first half. And that has to be a concern for Austin P. And part of that time was spent on the bench. Well, Terry Taylor, 22 points a game, 11 rebounds. He's the leader in blocks, steals, you name it. He's the two-time OBC Player of the Year. And Paez gets called for the bump on Rob. Yeah, Rob is really stepping it up offensively, contrary to my comments earlier. And Paez holding the hand. He had a hand injury earlier in the season. Trying to shake it off. In the game for Austin P, number two, Terry on Joseph. I think you got to forgive yourself on the Rob thing, by the way. Yeah, I, I, I you're did earlier. Hard. You're being hard on yourself. Well, you keep rebinding it. I did it earlier in the first half. I didn't bring, you I brought it up. But I fell on the you, sword early. You you brought it up here. I, <laughs> I didn't prompt you. I'm sure the Eastern Kentucky folks will give me grief over that as well. And, you know, like all, I've earned it. <laughs> well, King missed and a rebounding foul. And, you, you saw A.W. Hamilton say, what are you doing? Kurt Lewis just got another one. He's got four fouls now. Well, that's a big loss inside the lineup. You're going to lose 11 points plus per game for Lewis. Well, well you're just thinking that gamble paid off. Lewis had the, the transition bucket, so you keep him in, you get his offense, but now who knows how long you're without him. So without Kurt Lewis, you said it, 11 points a game. And Peek got it up to the rim, and he'll have shots. Yeah, this is important for Peek to come in here and hit these free throws. And despite a three-point game, you really feel like the energy out of the locker room belongs to Eastern Kentucky so far. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the first five went to them. And Peek will uh, try to steady it here at the line. Transfer out of Georgia, Mike Peek. Played for Tom Crean. And also played with Anthony Edwards, who was the number one overall pick in the draft and having a great season for Minnesota in the NBA. So the sophomore Peek goes one and two at the line. 
Wendell Green got Terry, driving kick. And Rob's got another three. He's having a night. That's an understatement. Every time you say that, you look at me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the, the, oh, he's the come dread. on lately. I mean, you the, can, the, you, you're coming in with seven points a game with Rob, and you're already at nine with nearly 17 to play. Terry Taylor, little flip, and the tap, no. And Moreno kept it alive for Trey King. And this is the problem. It's left up to Peek and Taylor to keep balls and misses alive, and it's not a lot of size on the floor right now for the Governors. So EKU trying to extend the lead. We were tied at halftime. Oh, Rob has already gotten up a couple of threes. Now the turnaround shot. He's got it all working. Cooper Rob with 11 points. They made that shot over Joseph. As I mentioned, is a great leaper. That was a nice play. And again, this is indeed extra offensively for Eastern Kentucky. Where you're seeing Rob's production tonight. And it may make up for the fact that one of their key players is on the bench. G knocks it down. So the lead grew to seven. Austin P had a big lead by eight in the first half and right back downhill with Wendell Green, the point guard. Oh, they screened and Rob screened off for Green and Paez with the handoff just got beat. Paez missed the floater. Moreno reels in the miss. Oh, great handle and a reach in by Peak on Wendell Green. This guy is already a special player. Wendell Green. Cooper Robb has been special tonight. The transfer out of Charlotte. He's been a sharpshooter. And he's got Bob Belf and Mum. <laughs> We build on success and the success of others. But we are more than sports. We are institutions that play a special role. We are a community that cares, supporting one another beyond the field of competition. Now and always, we are all together. We are all the Ohio Valley Conference. You don't become a legend by being distracted. Legends are born out of discipline and focus. We are Legends Bank. Committed, strong, and growing stronger. Be part of something legendary. Legends Bank. Member FDIC. It was just a few drinks. I'm good. I thought it was good. After every game, we always have a few. It's no big deal. It was no big deal. Hey, I can hold my liquor. I thought I could hold my liquor. Eastern Kentucky is plus seven since halftime. They lead by seven. And Cooper Robb, the transfer out of Charlotte, said that, you know, he doesn't get a lot of looks or hasn't so far in his Eastern Kentucky career at seven points a game. But at Charlotte, he was a very good three-point shooter, 43%, and he showed it tonight. Well, he's just kind of been coming of age, so to speak, and right before my eyes as I was uh, making the defensive argument for him being in the game earlier. And, when I seen him earlier this season, he just wasn't in rhythm. And tonight, he's been able to find that. And he's been an added plus for Eastern Kentucky. 
No Kurt Lewis on the floor for Eastern Kentucky. He's got four fouls. Tend to shoot here for King. Oh, a little shoulder fake, and Trey King knocks one down. And that's a guy that's capable of dominating in the low post. Had five double-doubles the first month of the season alone. And he's feeling Austin Pease a little bit teetering right here. And they need to go to their guy, and he's got the basketball. He gives it up. And the biggest lead for either team tonight right here at nine points. Big possession here in the half court. It's gone nowhere yet. 25 seconds elapsed. Paez zooms off a screen. Two to shoot. Oh, he had to get that up. Instead, gave it up. And it's a shot clock violation. And Matt Figger pointed right to a sub. And Paez is going to come out for Jordan Adams. Oh, no. Paez is staying in. Uh, they're going to get Adams back in the game and try to get him jump started offensively. Adams with only three on the night. That's kind of the strategy they're looking at right now is what five is going to get offense for me on the floor. And you may be in a situation, if you're a bad figure, you have to give up a little defense trying to cut back into this lead. I just wanted to say I appreciate that Matt Figure is wearing his credential like like he wasn't going to be let in tonight. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> like... You mean like he and A.W. Hamilton don't look like brothers? Is that what you're trying to say? Oh, Trey King, man, he's got it going right now on that turnaround jump shot. I'll vouch for you, Matt. Not a problem. So you said it teetering right now for Austin P. It was a five-point game when Eastern Kentucky won it in Clarksville early in the season. Austin P dominated from the outside to win by 15 later. And need more of that, Terry Taylor plus a foul. And a triple team and a very good pass by Peak. Some may argue dangerous, but Peak able to loft it up. Look at this pass Peak makes. Off to the left hand of Taylor. That's his shooting side. That's as good a dangerous at the same time entry pass as you'll see. Terry Taylor already at his 20th double-double of the season. He's the back-to-back -back OVC player of the year. The, the first back-to-back -back player of the year for the Govs since Otis Howard in 1978, who went on to play for the Milwaukee Bucks. Already got one three from Faye, but that wasn't close. Yeah, that's uh, that's surprising because I thought Eastern Kentucky was going to be able to put together a run, and they may do Stusa right here. Oh, Green just toying with it, and he goes underneath Taylor. Oh, my goodness. Well, that'll get you to fall out of your chair. Yeah, put that on the highlighter reel. You might want to send that to Bristol. All right. Tape machine will be busy. During the break, a timeout. <laughs> Wendell Green, gorgeous. Got I that thing get, on a string. Yeah, I want to talk over this. 30 second timeout stretch to a full. Bob is mum again as we go to break. Just when you thought it couldn't get any better than crispy, juicy, and tender, we went. And when we say crispy, juicy, tender, this is the juicy and drive it's what propels the champions the comeback kids you can tell this is really crispy juicy and tender because we wouldn't take the t when we say crispy juicy tender this is the juicy and when we say crispy juicy tender this is the juicy and just when you thought it couldn't get any better than crispy juicy and tender we went and when we say crispy juicy tender this is the juicy and you can tell this is really crispy juicy and tender because we wouldn't take the t just when you thought it couldn't get any better than crispy juicy and tender we went and just when you thought it couldn't get any better than crispy juicy and tender we went and drive it's what propels the champions the comeback kids when we say crispy juicy tender this is the juicy and you can tell this is really crispy, juicy, and tender because we wouldn't take the t Just when you thought it couldn't get any better than crispy, juicy, and tender, we went and You can tell this is really crispy, juicy, and tender because we wouldn't take the t You can tell this is really crispy, juicy, and tender 
because we wouldn't take the t you can tell this is really crispy juicy and tender because we wouldn't take the t you can tell this is really crispy juicy and tender because we wouldn't take the t when we say crispy juicy tender this is the juicy and when we say crispy juicy tender this is the juicy and you can tell this is really crispy juicy and tender because we wouldn't take the t BKU fans are uh, going to be at work tomorrow saying, did you see what point guard Wendell Green did to the player of the year, Terry Taylor? Freshman point guard, Wendell Green. Give it a little dun 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 Yeah, that's, that's what you thought. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, like I said, a rocket and send it to Bristol. <laughs> well, uh, this was uh, somewhat predicted by A.W. Hamilton, Green's head coach tonight. He he said plainly he could explode tonight. He's he's very comfortable, and who he is as such a young player comes out of Lalamere Prep in Indiana. A bunch of great names have come out of there, including Jordan Poole of the Golden State Warriors, and Austin P. gives it away. Important three, four minutes here. It is. It is. And you can already see a little. Austin P is kind of contesting every foul that's called against them or not in their favor. And that, that's a bad sign for any team, any place. But you got to stay focused on this guy. And finally, probably the first mistake of the night Green makes. Paez took the, took the charge. Oh, he got in the pie as high above the shoulders. Again, pound for pound, Carlos Paez is the best defensive player in this conference. He's 180 pounds. Uh, Grayson Murphy is the two-time defensive player of the year. He plays for Belmont. And Jordan Adams with a shot that will be reviewed for now. It's a two, and I think that'll stand. I don't think that uh, Carlos Paez is 180. Hits by <laughs> dose, <laughs> pound for pound. <laughs> okay. You uh, you got him on a scale yourself there in Clarksville? No or offense to Grayson Murphy, but Grayson's not 165, 170 either, so. Well, timeout. We will, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I got nothing for you, Bob. <laughs> Something about player weights when we come back. You can tell this is really crispy, juicy, and tender. Because we wouldn't take the t You can tell this is really crispy, juicy, and tender. Because we wouldn't take the t When we say crispy, juicy, tender, this is the juicy and You can tell this is really crispy, juicy, and tender. Because we wouldn't take the t Drive. It's what propels the champions, the comeback kids. Just when you thought it couldn't get any better than crispy, juicy, and tender, we went and... Just when you thought it couldn't get any better than crispy, juicy, and tender, we went and... You can tell this is really crispy, juicy, and tender, because we wouldn't take the... T Just when you thought it couldn't get any better than crispy, juicy, and tender, we went and... When we say crispy, juicy, tender, this is the juicy and... When we say crispy, juicy, tender, this is the juicy and... You can tell this is really crispy, juicy, and tender. Because we wouldn't take the t Just when you thought it couldn't get any better than crispy, juicy, and tender, we went and... When we say crispy, juicy, tender, this is the juicy and... Just when you thought it couldn't get any better than crispy, juicy, and tender, we went and... When we say crispy, juicy, tender, this is the juicy and... You can tell this is really crispy, juicy, and tender. Because we wouldn't take the t you can tell this is really crispy, juicy, and tender. Because we wouldn't take the t When we say crispy, juicy, tender, this is the juicy and... When we say crispy, juicy, tender, this is the juicy and... When we say crispy, juicy, tender, 
This is the juicy and Tournament Bracket is brought to you by Graduate Nashville Hotel. When you're in Nashville for a big game, Graduate Nashville is the smartest place to stay. A, a big game coming up in the semifinals tomorrow, Jacksonville State. Let's see what the legs look like. They played overtime today, and Belmont had the extra day to prep. Now that's a big question, and they'll play the opening game tomorrow night. And Moorhead awaits the winner of this one. I hope you Join our crew for those games on the Linear Network. Beyond ESPNU tomorrow night, ESPN2 at 8 Eastern Time, 7 Central on Saturday night. Each of these teams feel they have a shot to get there. Austin P, the preseason favorite, ended up finishing sixth, dealing with COVID and some injuries. And EKU, a 20 win team. Here's G for three. And Taylor tearing it out of there. He had three there. And the muscular player of the year going to the line. The only reason Taylor touched the basketball in that sequence was because he got a missed rebound. Why the offense did not run through him initially is beyond me, but now you're playing for your season here, Connor, and the tremendous career of Terry Taylor. You got to get him the basketball. So, so Matt Figger coached Michael Beasley. He was an assistant on the, the staff at Kansas State when Michael Beasley ended up being a lottery pick. And left-handed, you got a dominant player in this league. Naturally, that's where the mind goes for Matt Figger. He says, best hands of any player he's ever coached. And he's right there with Mike Beasley. That's, uh, that's quite the praise for Terry Taylor. He's got it back within seven. EKU not one to milk the clock, so there should be a, a lot of possessions left in this game. Rob, catch and shoot. Oh, air ball. He's been feeling it from outside tonight. That's only a second miss. And G really affected that shot after switching off defensively. Look how far the yeah. offense is pushed out. Yeah. No, I was, I was just thinking that. Now they get it into Taylor, and he slips, and they'll say there's a foul there. Ooh, Eastern Kentucky's bench is uh, feeling that emotion of uh, A.W. Hamilton right now. Mouth's wide open. Well, that might be a call you get when you're the player of the year of the conference. A little bit of a break there. But you, you know what? <laughs> That's, uh, we, we talked about the energy before for A.W. Hamilton. Uh, that, that's what's funny when you watch Terry Taylor. I mean, he gets absolutely annihilated sometimes at the rim. Uh, Matt, Matt Figger said that, you know, if he were a guard, he'd be shooting 200 free throws a year. That's that's not the case. He doesn't get the respect with some of these foul calls that you'd expect from a two-time player of the year. Uh, one of the things he's done is miss consecutive free throws. Yeah. That's very painful. It was a, a tie game at halftime. Eastern Kentucky trying to add to a seven-point lead. And they'll get a second chance. Green lines it up. And he rattles it down. The stage has not been too big for Green, the freshman tonight. We're seeing a budding star. One of two freshmen on the first team in the OVC. Terry Taylor in on two behind his back. And there's no foul called there. So Eastern Kentucky trying to get back to the semifinals. They got a shot at Belmont last year. Extra pass. And Rob back-to-back -back misses. Yeah, Austin Peay's got very lucky because, again, their switch defense just really hasn't been there. And to your point, Rob has been right at that corner back-to-back. -back. Over the top, it's Taylor. Took it right off the head of King. And a jump ball. Keep it down on this end with the Govs. How he gets to some of these balls is, is just amazing. And that one, he just out jumped the opponent and took it off and over his back without committing a foul. And 
Well, that was over a guy that's five inches taller than him. If uh, you, don't, you don't believe the roster height or the uh, roster weights, uh, do you at least believe the roster heights? With certain players. <laughs> well, Taylor's six five. On that. <laughs> Taylor's six five. King is six nine. And we'll assume that everybody gives it a little bump. So, four inch difference. Five to shoot here for Paez. Turns the corner. Hangs and oh, we knocked that off the window and down. Carlos Paez makes it an eight-point game, and then he commits the foul. Actually, it's going to be a Woodard. Yeah. Let's go back to something more pleasant for Austin P. That's his play by Paez, switching hands high off the glass, and Woodard. Again, for defensive purposes, comes into the game and commits a foolish foul. Back cut, and G was there to rip it. Well, they might have had a break. Went off the foot of Paez. Coming straight downhill, G gets fouled. And you're seeing these windows here, Bob, where Austin P, you know, front end of a one and one, back end of two at the line for Taylor, and a chance at three here if this layup sticks. That's good defense coming from the help side by Belogan. We haven't talked a lot about him tonight. Uh, Tariq Balogun. As G knocks down the first free throw. G Lewis. Back. Yeah, Lewis back in the game here. Yeah, he's he's had the four fouls. He picked up his fourth 11 minutes ago of game action. It was three minutes into the half. Yeah, let's see if he can ride it out to the finish line. So Austin P hasn't let it get away from him. You said it. It was teetering a little bit. Had it to an 11 point game, but back to six. Interesting lineup actually on the floor for both teams. This guy is going to be the steady right here for Eastern Kentucky. And now they're going to get in the half court a bit. You're talking green. I am. I Watch Moreno in these kinds of situations. This is where I think he really excels. That was a, a slick cross from green, but a little too much movement. And that pass was ill-advised. It was Taylor looking for peak. Another turnover for Austin B when they had a chance. Forced a bad shot. Take a look at the two running down the floor. You can kind of see what he's looking at there, but way off target. Gonna make a better pass if you are if you are gonna throw that pass. Now 15 turnovers for the Govs. Lewis had it stripped. And if that's on him. No, they got it on Austin P. It's on Jordan Adams. Under eight timeout. One team's going to the semifinals tomorrow night to face Moorhead State. It's EKU by six. We not only Your have top to salesman is working from home while working to close a deal. People. When his Uncle Larry decided to stop by two weeks ago, this looks like a job for smile power. Good thing your employees have dental insurance backed nationally by over 65 years of motor defending experience. So their healthy deal closers are always ready to close. Unleash your smile power with Delta Dental of Tennessee. Talk to your employer or visit CoverYourMouth.com today to learn more. Visit Evansville, Indiana, where E is for everyone. Ideal for a weekend getaway, family reunion, group tour, concert or sporting event, small business meeting, or a large convention. Evansville has a fun, friendly environment with all the amenities of a big city. Exciting events, festivals, and attractions all year long. A thriving downtown with new hotels, nightlife, fabulous restaurants, and entertainment. We're conveniently located in the heart of the Midwest with all the charm you could ever hope for. Yes, Hoosier hospitality is alive and well. Come visit Evansville and you will see E is for everyone.
I'm Chad Miles, host of Kentucky Field, the longest running outdoor show in the nation. I've had the privilege of watching Kentucky's elk herd grow to the largest east of the Mississippi, attaining Boone and Crockett status, and I've shared in some amazing elk hunts along the way. This year, nearly 600 tags are available to the public, and you can take your pick of tags to put in for and possibly go on the hunt of a lifetime. Simply apply by April 30th for your chance to hunt elk right here in Kentucky. Hey, thanks for staying up late with us on this Thursday night. I think it's still Thursday. Uh, Bob Belvin, Connor Onion. We talked about it last night, Bob, about how the teams in the Eastern time zone, this is super late in the second game. And talking to A.W. Hamilton, the head coach for Eastern Kentucky this morning, he said that they, they practiced late Monday, set the body clock, stayed off their legs on Tuesday night, had a team activity to just kind of reflect on the season. He said he played one shining moment for them, and they actually got together in the gym and practiced cutting down the nets. They got the ladder out. They got the scissors out. And he wanted his guys to envision winning three games in three days. Trying to take the first step today, get to the semifinals. And Austin Pease kept this close. Outside shots not falling for the Govs. Uh, not so here they all. are within six. The three-point shooting has been very much off the mark. Only one of 12. That's hard to imagine. Back out to Paez. And just the second three of the day for Austin P. Right on cue. Well, Matt Figger said early outside shots have to fall if we're going to win this game. They didn't, but Austin P is still right here. Now, this is one of those classic cases you hear coaches talk about a lot, Connor. That is, can I put together three stops back to back defensively? Well, he almost had two in a row. It'll be five to shoot off the foot of Taylor. And he's saying no way. He thought it was off Moreno. His demeanor is outstanding. You can see him going back and forth with the official then. And you would never know whether Terry Taylor was up 20 or down 20. Well, he's down three. And Moreno has it pop out. Fight for the ball. And Woodard with great work to win it away for the Govs. Three on two here. Peak attacking the rim. And he got hit. And a chance to make this a one-point game. Seven-0 run right now for Austin P. A chance to add to it. It's a really good pass by Paez, kind of across the defense. He had Taylor already down, and Taylor kind of screened two defenders away from Peak. Third one got to him, and big free throws here. Well, how about Paez, too, the, the three that he just hit to make it a one-possession game? His nickname is Chino. Like and Cappuccino? The, I don't know where that comes from, but I can tell you this. It's after our job. He's a uh, broadcasting student. All right. Well, one day he'll be assessing uh, body weights with you then. <laughs> <laughs> it's not in the curriculum there. <laughs> <laughs> One point game, winners what. on to the semifinals against Moorhead State tomorrow. EKU got there last year with a win against Tennessee State, their first game. Green stepped back, nearly banked it in. And look at this, Austin P was down double digits in this half, a chance to take the lead right here. Boy, a rare miss by Piaz. He had Peak wide open down the floor. Oh, and Peak stepped out of bounds. So that opportunity to take the lead will have to wait another possession as Matt Figger will see his team go back down on D. Now three stops in a row for Austin P. We talked about you need to put together stops back to back. Unable to convert there to perhaps take the lead. So they'll need another stop. Three in a row, our friend Ray Jacoletti would call that a turkey. Well, they've got another stop off of the miss from Lewis. Another double-double night for Terry Taylor. 15 points, 15 boards. And I forget which animal four in a row was for Ray, but that brings <laughs> up fond memories. Pull-up jumper. Adams, nope. A 16th rebound for Taylor. He's trying to give Austin P the lead. Hangs. And he got it to roll home. Back from down 11 to up one. 
here in the final five and a half for Austin P. So Eastern Kentucky needs to regroup. Timeout for Wendell Green. And Terry Taylor doing a little floor slapping right now. You can understand why. They've locked down the last four minutes. No points for the Colonels. Yeah, that's what you need when you're down 11, obviously, from a mathematical standpoint, but also just from an emotional standpoint. So here's where it starts, or where it actually ended. Taylor with a turnaround and just got it to fall. And that's the floor slapping you're talking about. And it all started back to the Piaz 3. Remember, again, they were teetering the sequel. Piaz hits the three, and then all of a sudden you string together four consecutive stops, and you turn the tide. Two, three, and four on that list are already into the semifinals. Terry Taylor's trying to join those three in the semis, and he's trying to get a crack at one of the guys that's trying to follow him up next year, maybe as the player of the year. Janai Broom for Moorhead State, Preston Spradlin, the coach of the year. They're looking on. Getting the winner of this game, and then Grayson Murphy will be back at it in the first game tomorrow night. They'll play JSU, who played overtime and beat Murray State. It was time to play coach right here if you're Austin P. Kind of real easy to say more of the same, but the defensive intensity has changed quite a bit. It's been there, and that sparked this offensive outburst allowing the Governors to take the lead. For Eastern Kentucky, I think you do go back to that guy. It's kind of a back to basics kind of thing. See if he can create something for you on the penetration and then put it on the rim and see what can happen. All right, so in the hands of Green. He's taking a 30-footer. Oh, and cold-blooded from Wendell Green out of the timeout. Now there I go coaching again, and Green turns right back around and drains a 30-footer. Instead, I thought he would penetrate. Yeah, why put it on the rim when he can swish it from 30? It was Terry Taylor with the offensive foul. Well, first, he said, eh, eh. That screen's good enough. I'll just shoot over it. At the other end, a huge turnover for Austin P. A.W. Hamilton said he ain't scared. That's what he, he said. First thing that came to mind with Wendell Green. He's, he's not scared. And that was courageous. So that snapped the scoreless drought of four minutes. And now EKU scored on back-to-back -back possessions with Blanton. They're up four. And here comes the pressure. And force Austin P. as they always do with their defensive set to come the full court, but it's just kind of amplified at this point of the game. Now the switch out. And an outside shot won't stick for Peak. So now Evan Flo, Eastern Kentucky with three consecutive stops. I need you to get back to me on that, that four stop animal, whatever that is. We'll have to, uh, have to call Ray. Might be a little bit busy <laughs> with Arch Madness. He's, he's coaching in the A-10 now. Or A-10 rather. And a foul. Let's see if they, oh, they're going to say that shooting. Woodard reaches in on Green. And after the timeout, Green's going to have three free throws. That is a huge play with inside four to go. You can tell this is really crispy, juicy, and tender because we wouldn't take the t Just when you thought it couldn't get any better than crispy, juicy, and tender, we went and Drive. It's what propels the champions, the comeback kids. When we say crispy, juicy, tender, this is the juicy and... Just when you thought it couldn't get any better than crispy, juicy, and tender, we went and... You can tell this is really crispy, juicy, and tender because we wouldn't take the... T you can tell this is really crispy, juicy, and tender because we wouldn't take the t Just when you thought it couldn't get any better than crispy, juicy, and tender, we went and... When we say crispy, juicy, tender, this is the juicy and... When we say crispy, juicy, tender, this is the juicy and... You can tell this is really crispy, juicy, and tender because we wouldn't take the t When we say crispy, juicy, tender, this is the juicy and... 
You can tell this is really crispy, juicy, and tender. Because we wouldn't take the time. Just when you thought it couldn't get any better than crispy, juicy, and tender, we went and... Drive. It's what propels the champions, the comeback kids. Look at the beautiful Ford Center that's seen a couple of great games tonight and coming down to the wire once again in our second quarterfinal on the evening and our final quarterfinal of the first round. And Eastern Kentucky saw Austin P take a brief lead there after trailing by 11, but Wendell Green has uh, taken it into his own hands here. Well, you figured that that would be the case for Eastern Kentucky. Would Austin P defensively somewhat allow him to and very tough call going into the break against Austin P and Green will shoot three we'll have two more to come Wendell Green is out of Detroit played his high school basketball at Lalamere Prep in Indiana and on the AAU circuit AW saw him uh, AW Hamilton saw him for the first time in Champaign Illinois and it was an event where a bunch of high major coaches were there, and the the word was starting to get around about Wendell Green. He didn't think they could get him. But he said, hey, I might as well try. Had a conversation with him, sold him on Eastern Kentucky, and here he is. He's been the top scorer tonight, 20 points. I'm going to hire A.W. Hamilton for a couple of Fortune 100 sales staffs. <laughs> That's a great job. and Particularly, can considering yes it was a planned event in champagne but that's right there you look at the success illinois had this season yeah well good pass there from paez stuck it up toward the rim for taylor and it's back to four so the free throws by green canceled out with a quick bucket by the govs don't mean to oversimplify things here, but again, you, if you're Austin P, you got to go back to, hey, we've got to get it three stops, four stops in a row. That was on Austin P's number 12. G's curious about that. One and one time for Eastern Kentucky. Bonus the rest of the way for both teams. Let's see if we can see it. That's a tough one for Matt Figure and his staff. And Kurt Lewis has been able to avoid the foul out. Came in with seven and a half left with the four fouls. They get to keep those pom-poms. Last time we did a game, they, they gave the pom-poms <laughs> back. You're going way back in the archives when you talk about that. <laughs> it was a year ago. <laughs> That was in real year or pandemic <laughs> years. What was that? Uh, true. True. Well, one and two at the line for Kurt Lewis. And still a two possession game late. Winner gets Moorhead State. Eastern Kentucky couldn't have come in much hotter. Beat Belmont in the final week. Won three in a row. 15 and five overall. Austin P. They kind of tripped their way into this tournament, but. They played well enough to be close tonight, and they'll have it with three to shoot. That's the important number, three to shoot. After Adams had it knocked away from him by Green. So all eyes on Terry Taylor in this scenario. That's that's exactly what you want to do. You want to watch Adams, the trail guy, always and inbounds it. Three to go. They get it in. Paez. Oh, he throws it in. What was that? Carlos Paez with a leaner at the end of the clock. To make sure he made it before the end of the clock. That's going to be the question in the review. And it's going to instead be ruled a two, but Austin P will take it nonetheless. <laughs> it's a line drive, Connor. Well, of, of all the open looks you've had from outside tonight, that's the one that, well, that's not an open look, but of all the looks you've had from outside tonight, ends up being a two, but... Matt figured he'll take it. So it was Paez's three that started the run that got Austin P in the lead momentarily. They led by one. 
EKU back up three, though. Oh, the feed off for Blanton. Left it short in the layup. Tapped around. He got it back. Rob wide open. Swirls out. Tapped around. Lewis, no. And Peek was there. The rebound, and Lewis has just fouled out. Well, that is a huge sequence for Austin P to be able to survive that. Eastern Kentucky had a great look from three. Had a couple really inside shots that they just couldn't get to fall. And if you're Austin P, you are thinking you're lucky stars right now. You're going to be shooting free throws. And we'll have that stoppage in play with the long horn due to Lewis fouling out. So Lewis just never really got going tonight, Bob. Limited to 17 minutes, three points. And remember, he was a non-factor in the win for Austin P. He didn't play in the win for Austin uh, P. in, in the, the two regular season meetings that they split. Also, that's 11 points per game going off the floor. And to your point, he just not has not been up to it tonight in a pretty big spotlight. That's a big miss. Another miss by Peak. Oh, recalibrates to make it a two-point game. All right, so Eastern Kentucky had a little jolt after they called the timeout. It started with Wendell Green. Austin P got a couple of big stops. Four-minute scoring drought that they held EKU to to take a lead. Looking to get another one and go back down and tie or take the lead. Almost had it, second chance, and ripped away. It's into the hands of Taylor. Two ties it. Three puts Austin P in the lead with inside two minutes to go. Austin P trying to be the first underdog to move on to the semifinals. It's been chalk so far, one through four. And a three seed EKU trying to survive. There's a three from G, and Austin P does have a lead back. You can make the argument of that sequence defensively for Eastern Kentucky. They were very concerned about Taylor and Peak on the inside. And I'm very surprised at how wide open G was for that shot. Some pounds being lost right now. Sweating it out here. Blanton. Oh, had it pinned up against the black backboard. That'll count. And Peak got it on its way down. So G with a big three to put Austin P in front. But the goaltending the other way from Peak on Blanton has EKU up one. Well, Bob, you were uh, seeing ghosts last night after a long day. I, I think uh, this is plenty to keep you engaged with the two games we've had tonight. <laughs> Was I that bad? <laughs> no, you were you were great. You were great. You, you said I mean again. Well, this is big. You, this, you hey. said it. Your words. I'm just using your words. Hey, you two, said you were seeing ghosts. Two great games here in the nightcap for you and I, and maybe not quite that type of competitive level that we saw the two that we had last night to end up. And watching Peak seem to be injured after that play. To do his hand or something. I think he got it between the rim and the backboard as he pinned that yeah. that shot. I believe that's where that may have happened. And you know, there's a good chance he's going to shoot free throws here on the way out. Want to keep an eye on that. One point game. Austin P has led twice, both one point leads. After they trailed by 11, they're down one here. They'll let the clock wind inside a minute. Winners out of the semifinals to face Moorhead State. Paez, drive and kick, G, same spot. Couldn't get it this time, but reset that shot clock to 20. They got Paez at 5'10", tracking it down on the weak side. Who's going to take the shot? You got the player of the year down there in the low post and Terry Taylor. Jordan Adams, seven to shoot. Cuts left, steps back, got it blocked. The defense from Blanton. And the shot clock still on with three seconds between. And it looks like Austin Peay will play it out for now. What's the uh, SMH? I am shaking my head again. Two straight possessions. 
Terry Taylor does not touch the basketball. So they get a foul with 12.2, not shooting. And this will be a one and one. That's important to keep in mind. Austin P has two timeouts left. Possession arrow is with EKU. But I, I'm with you. How does how does Terry Taylor, no, no matter how far away from the basket, how does he not touch it? A chance for Green to continue to shine here as he has all season long, particularly the latter part of this year. And he just gets it done, Connor. Yep, he's the guy you want up there, 76%. That's tops for A.W. Hamilton's team. Plenty of time for Austin P. but your dilemma now offensively is, is that you may have to go for a three. Get back in your offense very quickly. You're going to yep. get the pressure here as normal. All or right. Medium pressure, and this is a very smart timeout. Second to last timeout for Austin P. And they'll try to send it to overtime with 9.7 left. And the shot clock turned off. So they, they've struggled from three overall tonight. But late second half, a couple of different guys. Paez has hit a big three to, to give him a lead. Reginald G has hit a big three to give him a lead. So it, you've got some guys that are at least feeling good coming here down to the final 10 seconds. Well, you know, G felt that way in the second one that he missed just a moment ago after hitting that big one. Kind of feeling it in that case. I don't know that you go to him. Uh, Adams, that last shot he had was rather flat. But you've got to have the three to tie it, so you've got to move your offense out. I still think you need to give Taylor a chance to take a three. And we'll see exactly what Matt Figure draws up here in just a moment. And there's a disconnect here sometimes between teams, Connor, with what's going on on the whiteboard right now and what really happens when you turn the lights on and play. And so execution is paramount right now. Well, two well-coached teams that have played a great game here tonight. They have uh, entertained you at home, us here at the Ford Center. And laying it all out, trying to match up with Jani Broom, the freshman of the year in the conference, and Moorhead State in the semifinals tomorrow night. So Terry Taylor, you know, he's a great option if you're down one or two. Let's see if he's the guy that's taking the shot if you're down three. Jordan Adams is out there to trigger it in. 9.7 to go. Trip to the semis on the line here in the next nine seconds. Adams has it in his hands. Paez comes to get it. Thought about a deep one. Down to two. Gets it off. It's blocked. And Eastern Kentucky is moving on. Austin P never gets one to the rim. And A.W. Hamilton said this team's got a little magic in them. They survive tonight. They get more head state tomorrow. I have questions, Connor, but the answer is Eastern Kentucky prevails. Paez almost pulled up from halfway to midcourt and then tried it again and couldn't get it up. I thought Paez could be good.